So now we'll, we'll talk about the mathematical. Uh, description of the resonance frequency and how you actually derive that and a lot of this is just you know doing some steps of algebra and applying some um, different solving methodologies uh, they're not necessarily related to the physics of the system the physics of the system are kind of the end equations that you get uh, so anyway so we'll just I'll just highlight some of the key factors that I feel that you need uh, without going through all of the derivation Unless you need to do that, there are textbooks and courses uh, dedicated to this subject and explaining uh, how it all works together. So we have this mass spring damper system, um, and uh, we can write the formula for it. The formula comes from the um, mass, of the force balance. So x dot is representing the um, derivative of the displacement. So x is now a displacement. Uh, we're not talking impedance electrics right now. We're just talking uh, general systems like this with the displacement going here. And um, we have, we're going to have a force, Ft, also going in that direction. So we have Ft defined like this. The way you solve this is you first uh, realize that this, this system is in the form Um, is it is in a canonical form so by dividing through math by mass and noticing that we sort of already know the end equation um, we can kind of substitute this these parameters here but even if you didn't know them uh, if you just substitute these parameters and you work out the equations what you assume is that f of t is a sinusoidal varying function. So therefore we also assume that the resultant displacement is going to be a sinusoidal varying solution minus omega. So there's some phase lag going on and we know that the, the phase is not going to be in line with the force all the time. Um, it will follow the pattern which you previously described going from 0 to negative 180. But um, this is the kind of uh, result, and this is obviously dependent on frequency. Uh, this this uh, uh, this displacement. So, if you want to describe the phase, uh, I'm going to jump ahead, and this all this uh, derivation is outlined on a document attachment. There's a detachment. So if you feel need, you need more clarification on this exact topic, there's, there's an attachment there for you. And also we recommend looking at a textbook. Uh, it's a little bit complicated uh, and not 100% necessary for you to learn right now. Uh, but you should have an idea of it. And I will describe the results. So we have this uh, theta, which is the phase. I wrote theta like this. It doesn't matter how you write it. I'll start like that. Um, so theta equals the tangent of two zeta omega omega n divided by omega n squared minus omega squared. So this gives you the phase, which will depend on. Like I said, the phase depends on the material properties just as the resonance frequency does. So at the resonance frequency, what happens? Uh, this term becomes omega squared on the top. And here you see this term, omega n minus omega n equals uh, zero. In real life, you don't, unless then this equals infinity. And uh, thus, this would be negative 90 <laughs> because the tangent um, of infinity and this would be a positive infinity depending on which where you came from um, we get a negative 90 phase uh, revolving around this problem the force uh, I mentioned that we had this pro uh, parameter as a function see the amplitude you know we have the amplitude of the uh, of the displacement the amplitude of the displacement is equal to the following expression
which is going to be uh, the force that I mentioned earlier divided by the mass square root and you can do some checks just to see if this is like reasonable for example this zeta value I, I didn't really introduce it but the zeta value uh, right here is the damping coefficient so let's say the damping is zero and I, I think I mentioned the damping here uh, if you solve this out the damping coefficient is going to be equal to uh, C over M 1 over 2 omega n so th it's proportional so let's say there's no damping C 0 then this term would be 0 so if we had F, the omega approaching omega n we would have this bottom term at 0 thus we would have an infinite displacement but in order not to have infinite displacement uh, we tend uh, to have a damping we put a damping in there just to make uh, things reasonable and fit actual uh, data in real life situations so at resonance frequency it's it's large and this term is kind of proportional uh, to the this is the proportional this proportional to omega but this term is very sensitive uh, to the omega with regards to omega n. So depending on how close we are to omega n, this, this term is extremely affected, but this term is kind of a, a regular term uh, which just scales with omega. Rather omega squared here. It scales with omega squared. So these are the two, so what we get, you know, for dimping different damping coefficients, let's call this omega r. So let's say case A, B, C, zeta equals 0 0.1, zeta equals 0 0.001, zeta equals 0, let's say zeta equals 1. So if zeta equals 1, or oh, zeta equals 0 0.001, we start like this, and be really high, and then we come back down and eventually goes to zero. If z equals 0 0.001, we go even higher because there's less losses. So we're able to store more energy. And if the zero equal, zeta equals one, which is critical damping, uh, we don't really see this resonance effect much. The more we damp it, uh, the more uh, this resonance point will not be storing energy because this will be so much bigger. When this is really big, then this term kind of doesn't really matter anymore. It's kind of dominated by uh, the other term. So at the resonance frequency, given that C is not zero, i.e. losses exist, we lose the energy. Uh, we can kind of determine uh, the uh, amplification of, lo of losses. So basically this term at the resonance point is equal to 1 over omega r minus omega r squared which that's 0. Uh, we're going to go over that. Let's draw this f and this is the square root um, plus 2 omega omega r squared so our, all these things are squared so basically uh, we get a final value which is f over the mass times 2 uh, omega the, and times the resonance frequency so this is exactly proportional to c so what we can understand is that the displacement at resonance is proportional, inversely proportional to C. So if we increase C, uh, we're going to decrease the uh, the resonance frequency maximum displacement. But if we decrease C, we have a low loss. We're going to have a very high um, displacement. 
So this is the thing which limits the displacement and the resonance conditions, is this existence of the C or losses. Again, we're talking about this in general terms. Um, in the next lecture, I'm actually going to describe, um, we don't actually use this C. I mentioned that uh, in piezoelectric logic materials, we have an elastic compliance, which has a um, complex representation. That complex representation allows us to account for losses. But here we have this external kind of damper. So I'll explain in the next lecture, what's the difference between these two cases? We have one case. where we have a mass and we have our traditional damper that we learned in our linear systems class or if you use this term if you have the spring constant but it's k which equals k minus i so if we have this or this, these, this difference uh, I'm going to explain uh, next time. And this is actually the model which we use for piezoelectric materials, not this. We don't use this for actually for piezoelectric materials, but it's easy to understand. Easy to understand. Once we talk talking about complex material properties, uh, we kind of start, you know, really... <laughs> so then, so mechanical engineering and linear systems are always learning about this type of thing. So thus, I covered it in this way first because there's most information. I actually didn't find any derivations on this. I have one for you though. You're in good hands. I have one derivation for you explaining uh, and kind of outlining the uh, derivation of the system for this. It's also in the attach in the in the attachments. So look at that. Uh, so once you have understood this, understood, check, then go to this one and kind of check that off too. I'll explain it in general, generally, just as I explained uh, in this lecture generally. Uh, here we just went over the basic of the derivation where we kind of assumed, assumed the solution, typical mathematical way to solve problems. I mentioned that you need to go for the, that, the attachments or the textbook or a textbook for more information. You mentioned about the phase, how it's uh, 90, negative 90 at resonance, and we also measured mentioned that you, increasing the damping decreases the maximum uh, resonance vibration, and we saw that it's uh, inversely proportional to the C damping coefficient. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time, and we'll talk about this problem. Thanks.